the scrape box socket tool add-on. What is it? How does it work? That's what we're going to cover in this video. My name is Ryan Borden. Let's get started. Before we get started, I'd encourage you to sign up for my free tips. You're going to get free tips, full-length tutorials, guides, checklists, and I'm even going to show you how to make money using Scrapebox. It's all for free. You can sign up right now with the link up here in the right-hand corner or the link down in the description. So go ahead and pause the video, sign up, and then come back. And then let's get started. So the socket tool is one of the free add-ons in Scrapebox. You can get it by going to add-ons, show available add-ons, find the socket tool, and then you can click install or update if you already have it installed and you need to update. Once that's done, you can go to add-ons and go to the socket tool itself and launch it. What the socket tool basically does is it's kind of a debugging tool. So this video is going to be maybe a little different than some of the videos I've done because you kind of already have to have some pre-knowledge of what's going on here. I can't really teach you a class on how the internet works in this video. So if you don't understand something, I would go Google it. If you already know what's going on, uh, with some of this data, then you'll probably find this pretty useful to know that it's in here and how this works. So if you're kind of in the middle, hopefully I can maybe bridge the gap for you and help you out a little bit. So let's just do it. Uh, you're first going to put in a URL. So I just have scrapebox.com in here. This is obviously for troubleshooting a specific URL. So what you're going to do is there's two sections. There's the request and then the response. Anytime you submit a request, anytime that you load a page in a web browser like Google, the web browser makes a request to Google and then it gets a response and it displays it to you. So what this is doing is just showing you what's going on. So in the request field we can add a lot of things to test what might not be working. So what might you use this for? If you're having trouble with the contact form poster or the the poster in general, if you're trying to build a custom uh, search engine under the um, under here under settings and harvest your engine configuration, you want to build a custom search engine, you're having trouble. If you're using fast poster, contact form poster, that sort of thing, and you're having trouble. If you're trying to use the custom data grabber and you're having trouble with a particular website to get that data. If you're using the plug in itself and you're on the the email scraper and you're using this custom crawler up here the advanced custom data scraper you could use it in there to get information and there's more so if you wanted to troubleshoot and see what's going on we can test to see if we're getting blocked if maybe it's the user agent so we can put in our own custom user agent here again if you don't know what a user agent is then you're gonna have to go to Google but if you know what a user agent is you can just go to Google and get the user agent of your browser and put it in here. You can do content type, you can do accept, you can do an actual referrer. So you can set the referrer, like if you wanted to come from Google or from anywhere to see if that changes it, like if they're blocking you but not blocking Google, that sort of thing. You can request for gzip cookies, follow redirects, follow meta redirects. You can add other information to the header itself. I'm not going to explain that. If you know what it is, go with it. If you don't know what it is, you'll have to go again back to Google to figure out how get responses and post responses um, work. And then um, there's a connection timeout and read timeout. You can use proxies and pop all that information in here, even specify if it's a SOX proxy. So that's for submitting the request. And this is going to submit a get request for the response. Um, now, I I should say that to my knowledge, I do not believe that this will submit a post request. I believe it is a get re request only, um, but actually I'm going to pause this, whip out my debugger and find out for sure. All right, let's have a look. Start the debugger, run this bad boy and pause this and it is an actual get request. And so we can actually see, seeing as how we're here, this is HTTP debugger. This is what I use. The tutorial is not about that. However, we can kind of see because this is a request. So in debugger, if you click on this, you have the request so you can see your header data and the content and the actual raw data that's being sent to Scrapebox. And so that maybe will give you some context of like, here's a user agent and all that jazz that is, that is up here. And then the actual response here, we can see the header content raw, the HTML, here, let's go raw. And we can see the actual response from Scrapebox here. And we can then see the response down here. So we can see it's a 301 response move permanently. Obviously I messed up something there, but um, we can see the 301 here. So all this data is um, what Scrapebox is doing. And so this tool here, 
I don't know how much I pay for it, but it's in the triple digits. Um, and then every time I have to do a yearly update, it's um, in the double digits, maybe the triple digits. I can't remember. Um, and so I've been paying for updates for it for years. And so here, Scrapebox is giving you a ton of data here that's useful. And it just comes included with Scrapebox. I mean, Scrapebox costs in and of itself less than the, than the debugger tool I was just showing you. Anyway, so we can see the response codes, response text, the version, content type, the character set, the server itself, the redirect URL, and then all of the header data all down here, and then page code if there is any, and then we can even show in a browser here. And so when we do that, it actually opens up um, the file on our computer where it has stored that, and then we could even look at the HTML um, oh, I hit the wrong button. We could look at the HTML source, but it's a 301 redirect, so there's no HTML source. So let's do, for example, here, scrapebox, scrapebox fac, right? Um, this is an old site that I have that's not even, H, not even SSL, but uh, give us so we'll see the response codes and the page code and then we could even show it in the browser itself and here it is and then we could look at the source code of you know that this is the source code again so scrapebox sees the internet with javascript off so the, this file should be source code with javascript off and the page should render with javascript off as well as you can see some of that some of the question marks and different things going on Anyways, I don't even think that's because of JavaScript. I think it's otherwise. It doesn't matter. The point here is that um, this can be a really handy troubleshooting tool that is more valuable in and of itself than Scrapebox costs and can be super useful for anything that you need help with. If you don't have Scrapebox, click the link up here now or go to scrapebox.com and you can roll down here and pick up your copy. And if you miss it, it's in the video description down below. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.